Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, Ms. Jenny Daniel, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph, other members of the strategic management team, other heads of department, staff of the MOH, and the media fraternity. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to this media launch, where of course we'll be speaking about, um, it is the, a new testing method or technique for conducting pap smears and HPV testing. This comes under universal health coverage. This ceremony is going to be very short, very sweet. And first of all, I'd like to call on the director of universal health coverage, Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford. I would like to follow protocol already established and bid everyone a pleasant good morning. With the role of universal health coverage, the rule out of universal health coverage, evidently more people will use the healthcare system. The primary healthcare facilities will have to function as gatekeepers to the next more expensive level of care. Therefore, it is required to strengthen primary healthcare facilities and win public confidence to make primary health care the first point of call and entry into the health care system in St. Lucia. Providing all citizens the right to health care enables them to live healthier lives, thus protecting individuals from financial consequences of paying for health services out of their own pockets. Cervical cancer, which is the most common, which is the most common human papilloma virus or HPV-related disease, is one of the most common cancers among women worldwide, primarily of impacting women in low and middle income countries. Globally, cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer in women with 604,000 new cases in 2020. About 90% of the 342,000 deaths caused by cervical cancer occurred in low and middle income countries. About 10% of women with HPV infection on their cervix will develop long-lasting HPV infections that put them at risk for cervical cancer. Similarly, when high-risk HPV lingers and infects the cells of the genital areas, it can cause cell changes called precancers. These may eventually develop into cancer if they are not found and removed in time. In San Lucia, our 2014 to 2018 data on the top 10 cancer totals and incidence rates per 100,000 ranks cervical uterine cancer as the third highest cause of cancer at 22.8%. Breast cancer has a 51.7% and prostate cancer with a 44.1% ranked as first and second respectively. Knowing this, it should not surprise anyone when a decision was made by the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs to include cancer care services within the essential package of health services under universal health coverage. In 2018, the World Health Organization called for the elimination of cervical cancer to address this public health issue. Globally, while progress made to achieve these targets um, mentioned, the progress has been insufficient. It has been insufficient and uneven across the three pillars which I'm about to mention. The targets or the, the pillars or the targets that I'm about to mention. The targets are, first target, 90% of the girls by age 15 are fully vaccinated against the human papilloma virus or HPV that causes cervical cancer. The second target, 70% of women are screened with high performance tests by age 35 and again by age 45. And the last target, 90% of women identified with precancerous lesions or cervical disease receive treatment including palliative care. San Lucia, like many of the other countries, need to reduce by 30% the number of cervical cancer deaths by 2013, and that is a sustainable development goal three, um, target 3.4. Hence the Ministry of Health's decision to vaccinate children in grade three 
from 2019, and now the introduction of a new method to conduct pap smear, and that is a high performance test. Cervical cancer is an important part of, cervical cancer screening is an important part of routine healthcare for women. The goal of screening for cervical cancer is to detect precancerous lesions and effectively treat to prevent cervical cancer from developing. HPV can develop without causing symptoms. Regular screening is an important way of detecting any changes very early. Anyone with a weakened immune system or medical history of cervical lesions may require frequent screening. HPV infections are very common and the body's immune system usually clears them. The infection can remain in the body and cause health problems in some cases. Getting the HPV vaccine and having regular cervical screening reduces the risk of these health problems. Whether or not HPV causes symptoms is not related to whether it is high or low risk. Microscopic examination and laboratory testing are the only ways to determine the risk or the presence of cancer. There is no cure for HPV. Doctors commonly treat the, the, the conditions that HPV causes and remove the cells that appear cancerous or precancerous. Human papillomavirus testing has been recommended as the primary test for cervical cancer. We will be using the new method of conducting pap smears at the primary healthcare facilities. This new technique or liquid-based cytology, which we plan to launch in August, allows testing for HPV, particularly high-risk strains such as strain 16 and the strain 18, which are responsible for most of the HPV-related cancers. STIs such as gonorrhea and chlamydia from a single collection can be done as well. Theoretically, the liquid-based cytology technique has the advantage of easier interpretation, fewer unsatisfactory results, the filtering of blood and debris, and lower frequency of conducting pap smears. In the last century, cytology-based cervical cancer screening has been crucial in reducing the incidence and mortality of cervical cancer. HPV testing was subsequently developed with the discovery of the role of HPV in oncogens of cervical cancer. Most of the time, HPV does not cause any problems. In some people, some types of HPV can cause genital warts, abnormal changes in the cells that sometimes turn into cancer. HPV type linked to cancer are high risk types, for example, cervical cancer. There's no blood for tests for human papillomavirus. During cervical screening, a small sample of the cells is taken from the cervix and tested for HPV. The health provider may recommend more frequent screening if someone is HIV positive, have a weak immune system, have a recent abnormal cervical screening testing or biopsy results, and having a result of cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is preventable and curable as long as it's detected early and managed effectively. And I repeat, cervical cancer is preventable and curable as long as it is detected early and managed effectively. Despite the aforementioned, cervical cancer is still the most common form of cancer among women worldwide, the disease claiming the lives of 350,000 women in 2022. With the, new, the use of this new technique of cervical cancer screening and HPV testing using liquid-based cytology, St. Lucia can change this story by slowly eliminating cervical cancer. There were activities that were conducted under the, uh, by the Ministry of Health that clearly demonstrates the interest in introducing the advanced method of screening. These activities included the engagement of two laboratories on island that have the machine to process these samples, and that would be the Ezra Long Lab of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, and um, Lab Services and Consultation Limited. Both labs are expected to give us a quick turnaround time of the results, with a maximum of one month for the urgent samples, one week for one month for non-urgent samples, one week for urgent samples, and to report any abnormal findings within 24 hours of processing the samples to the physician or the wellness center. 
We also had meetings with obstetrician gynecologists from the public and private sector, as well as a focal point from Pan American Health Organization. We had trainings of staff in this new technique, which included the staff at the primary healthcare level, as well as the staff from the hospitals and St. Lucia Planned Parenthood Association. Training will continue to ensure that all who are interested are trained and given the, given the opportunity to do so if needed. Development also of standard operating procedures and key performance indicators. That was another activities, another activity, additional activities that we did. And we also had a partnership. We developed a stronger partnership with St. Lucia Planned Parenthood Association to ensure that we increase accessibility to women for this new method of screenings. And the activities will continue to ensure that the new service offered is a success and that all women can benefit. Important activities such as community outreach programs and other initiatives will definitely increase or expand the Ministry of Health's ability to detect cervical cancer early and thus making it easier for us to treat. Finally, Universal health coverage will encourage investments in prevention measures as they are cost efficient and are effective ways to save lives. Prevention measures also reduce the incidence and prevalence of most of the cancers encountered in patients who access our healthcare system. While investing in cancer care does require financial and human resources, studies on implementing the necessary programs to eliminate cervical and other cancers, improving screening, treatment, and quality of care globally clearly demonstrate that this investment has yielded and will continue to yield a high return. Therefore, let us do our part to eliminate cervical cancer. I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Eugene. Um, right now, I would like to call on the Principal Nursing Officer, Julita Cassius. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and pleasant good morning to everyone. So as the Ministry of Health um, makes strides towards the elimination of cervical cancer, um, the Ministry has will, of course, in its efforts, try to strengthen two major, to achieve two major targets, and that is the 90% vaccination coverage among our girls and boys, and the 70% screening. So as we are all aware, we know through our community wellness centers and through the schools, we have been um, performing those activities. So we introduced the quadrivalent HPV, human papillomavirus vaccine, in 2019 to all of our girls and boys in grade six. We know the focus is on girls as we talk about cervical cancer. However, we know that there are other HPV-related cancers that also can affect boys and men. So hence the reason why we decided as a country to introduce the quadrivalent vaccine to both boys and girls. Um, as of 2023, our coverage for that vaccine was 82%. So as you see, we are not very far from our 90%. However, we still need, um, we still have a lot, of way, a lot of work to do to get to our 90% coverage. However, I also just want to plug in here that St. Lucia was one of the countries in the region to have such a high HPV vaccination coverage. So I really want to applaud our team within the Ministry of Health and also our partners in assisting us in getting to that um, coverage. But like I said, we have a lot, long way to go still, and we want to continue to encourage parents to please have your children in grade six to get vaccinated. So the vaccine is available through the school vaccination program, which is given together with the um, DT, which is um, diphtheria tetanus, and the polio vaccines in grade six. So this vaccine was added in 2019, as I indicated, as part of the school vaccination. 
Um, as I indicated, the coverage, we have four um, serotypes for this vaccine in terms of coverage, which is 6, 11, 16, and 18. And as Dr. Eugene has mentioned, 16 and 18 are the two most predominantly um, virus types which is associated with cervical cancer. And we have the 6 and 11, which also gives coverage. So though we may ha not have introduced the nanovalence vaccine, which I know a lot of persons have become familiar with and is also widely used in the high resource countries. But we have done well because we have introduced the vaccines that really um, covers the um, HPV virus types which are associated with cervical cancer. Um, I also want to indicate that research, several research and studies have shown, particularly for those countries who had introduced the HPV vaccine way ahead of us in St. Lucia, that the one dose HPV vaccine has remarkably reduced cervical cancer among women. Okay, so the research is there, the studies have proven that the vaccine is effective, the vaccine is safe. So again, I just want to urge St. Lucia parents, please encourage your children, or we are encouraging you as parents to ensure that your children receive the HPV vaccine in grade six. So the second area we need to speak about um, in primary care is the screening. And we've heard Dr. Eugene mention the importance of screening. Screening for cervical cancer, and of course we want to also add breast cancer because we normally do the two together at the, at the um, wellness centers. It's widely available. So it means that it is accessible, yeah? So it's a procedure that is simple, painless, and I say painless, and it's non-invasive. So every woman from age 21 and beyond should get screened. And we are encouraging all women who are out there who have never done a pap smear, I will say pap smear because we're going to come to explain as Dr. Eugene. It's a, a more highly, um, a more high performance test. So every woman age 21 who have not, who've never had a pap smear done, we have quite a few of those women out there, and also who have not done one in an extremely long time. So here is your opportunity. No out of pocket payment under the UHC. Before we used to have, you would have to pay a twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars to get your pap smear done. So now you do not have to pay under the universal health coverage. So you are free to go in and to do your screen. Every woman has a right to accessing sexual and reproductive health services to protect and maintain your health as a woman. Elimination of cervical cancer is only possible if women come forward to screen. It is a cervical cancer is a very slow progressive cancer. And so when you do come for your screen at this first instance, of course, based on your results, you will be guided as to how to continue with your screens. Early detection, we, we do not want to overemphasize that. Early detection is extremely important. With early detection, abnormalities can be detected early enough for prompt referral and intervention. Early detection is key in preventing serious ill health and complications and even death. So with this new technique, which is the liquid-based cytology. As we keep saying, it's a high-performance test. The results are highly reliable. And it is a test which also has the ability to identify the HPV virus type and also, as have been indicated by Dr. Eugene, 
It can also test for select sexually transmitted infections such as syphilis and chlamydia. So the test has the ability to detect high-grade cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, which is what we would normally call CIN, the CIN1, CIN2, based on the, on, on the level. So again, these are the precancerous lesions, the precancerous cells that can be identified and detected through those tests. And we also want to encourage women, as have been indicated again, those women who are immunocompromised, the immune systems are extremely weak. They are more at risk of getting HPV infection that could potentially lead to cervical cancer. So we want to encourage our women to please present to the wellness centers. The schedule will be posted. So every single wellness center on the island will be um, offering the cervical cancer screen together with your breast exam screen as well. And you can also call for an appointment. We are aware that women are working women and they may not necessarily be able to present at the facility because it's on a weekday. But you can call the health center. The contact numbers are also posted on the schedule to be able to speak with the healthcare provider and to get an appointment to have your screen done. So what are the benefits of screening? So many women say, but OK, we would need to go to the health center. Why do we need to go? So what are the benefits of screening? We said it. Early detection means prompt referral, prompt intervention if anything is detected. Having your routine test also does not mean that you have to feel ill or you have to feel, have a symptom. Okay, prevention is key. When we look at primary health care, we talk prevention. Preventing an illness before it occurs. It's cost effective. In addition to not having to pay out of pocket, you also would not have to pay for treatment. Because if something is detected, if, if, if cervical cancer progresses, if um, the lesions progressive to progresses to sorry, cervical cancer, then it means that there is a cost, an added cost, not just to the individual, but to the family and also to the country. So it's cost effective to do your screen. Also, it reduces the discomfort of actually having to experience cervical cancer. Yeah? So again, we just want to take this opportunity to build on the partnerships and the relationships we've had with various stakeholders, various agencies, organizations that would assist us in, within the Ministry of Health to educate and to provide information as it relates to cervical cancer screen, as it relates to HPV infection, to all of our girls, our women, our boys, and our men. Thank you very much. Thank you, PNO. Um, this portion of our ceremony has come to an end. Right now, we'll be fielding questions from the media pertaining to the subject matter. Any questions? Or other members of the audience, if you have questions as well. You good? Okay. All right. So that means that everybody fully understood what, what the message that was brought across today. You guys did an excellent job. We have no questions. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So just to clarify, team, um, persons who have sons in grade six, can they expect to receive the virus as well, the son? Boys. To respond, can you come to the podium? Yeah, thank you, P.S., for your question. So um, we introduced the HPV vaccine 
to both boys and girls in grade six, that's the ages from, let's say, 10 to maybe 12, 13 years. So um, we know that um, it's specifically to prevent cervical cancer, but we know our boys are also exposed to the HPV virus. Um, we also have um, anal cancers that we have some HPV um, may be related to. So both our boys and our girls are given the HPV vaccine. So at least they are covered, not just covering the girls against cervical cancer, but also covering the boys from other types of cancer. I mean, you know, but also throat cancers as well can be HPV related. Yeah? I also want to indicate that I said community wellness centers, but when we say community wellness centers, we also want to take in Grosley Polyclinic, Denry Hospital, Sufre Hospital as well. So all of our primary care facilities, okay, will be offering um, the cervical cancer screen and also breast exam screen. Okay, thank you for that PNO. Um, without further ado, I'd like to call this session to an end. Thank you so much to the members of the press who are here. We are heavily dependent on you to spread this message. Of course, it is a new technique under universal health coverage. You, those of you who were unable to join us in person, I know that you are following the light feeds on YouTube and on Facebook. If you do have any other further questions, you can, of course, reach out to the universal health coverage unit through myself, or you can call our desk directly. Thank you so much for coming today.